guys, welcome back. Today we're gonna to be talking about our February favorites and least favorite products. So if you love favorite videos like I do, please give this video a thumbs up and let's just get into it. We're gonna talk about my makeup favorites first. So these two foundations were both part of my birthday haul this month, but the Estee Lauder Double Wear in the shade 1C0 Shell has become a favorite because even though I already was a fan of this formula, this is a really good color match for me. And the Tarte Shape Tape Foundation, this is the mattifying one in the shade Fair Neutral, is also a good color match for me and I really enjoy the formula of both of these. I find that they do help with oil control throughout the day and I do have very oily skin and the longevity on these is really good. So those are definitely favorites for the month of February. And then I have another foundation combination that's a favorite for me, and that is when I mix the Too Faced Peach Foundation in the shade Snow with the Jouer Foundation in the shade Pearl. The Snow is a little bit too dark and more pink toned, and the Jouer is a little, just a hair too light and also a little bit too yellow for me. So these two together make a perfect color match, and this one is more on the medium coverage side, which I generally prefer fuller coverage, but this I I would say it has more full coverage so when you put it together I'm happy with the coverage and I'm happy with the staying power on both of these as well I find that this combination does help to keep me matte throughout the day so this is a winner for me now we're gonna move on to some other face products and all of these were ones that I rediscovered through shopping my stash so let's start with the NARS Laguna bronzer I have never owned a full size, I only have some minis. But you can see that since I've started using it again, I am almost finished with this. So I'm making good progress and I actually have another mini of the Laguna bronzer that I'm gonna go through as well. The tone is cool enough that I can use this for both contouring and bronzing, so I've really been enjoying that. And then the NARS Orgasm Blush is another rediscovered favorite. I really enjoy the tone of this and you know your tastes and makeup can change and right now I'm kind of digging a more luminous bronzer so I have really been liking that as well as the Essence Pure Nude Highlighter. I think they still only have one shade which is Be My Highlight. This is just so beautiful. The tone of this is great, very neutral and if you put on a little bit it stays subtle. You can build it up to be more impactful but it still is not glittery whatsoever. It's just beautiful. Really really like like this. And then the BH Cosmetics Spotlight Highlight Palette. Just really, really impressed with this. The more I use it, the more I like it. So I think the last time I talked about this, I had said that these four were the ones I could use as highlighters, but that's not true. I can use this one as a highlighter too. I just have to go light-handed with it and it's a nice golden sheen. This is the only one that's really too dark for me to use as a true highlight. You cannot beat the $17 price tag on this. These are beautiful. They're not glittery. Just really, really liking this a lot. And then I've got some other kind of self-care category favorite products. So one is the Soap and Glory Sugar Crush Body Butter Cream. And this is a mini size that I got in a holiday set, but you can see I've made a pretty good dent in it. The quality of the body butter is good. I like to put this on my hands before I go to bed at night and it, it is really moisturizing. But the smell, the smell is what gets me. This smells like key lime pie or margaritas, it just has that really nice lime scent to it and I love it. Next we have this Aqua Cool Aloe Lotion from Bath and Body Works. This is in the scent Endless Weekend. So this is actually not super moisturizing, so I don't like to use it on my hands because I don't feel like it provides enough moisture for me. But what I really like about this is that it sinks in super quickly and so I really like to use this on my legs and my feet because I have a thing about when I get out of the shower and I put on, if I put in any kind of heavy lotion, I just feel like it takes forever to sink in and then I feel like I'm sticking to my clothes and I just don't like that at all. But this one sinks in really fast and on my, like, let's say my legs and my feet, I don't need maybe quite the intense hydration that I need on my hands. So I have been enjoying this in that capacity. And my last favorite that I want to talk about is actually a toothpaste. So this is the Sensodyne Rapid Relief Toothpaste and I don't know if they have different flavors or not, but this is extra fresh. And it's it promises sensitivity relief in 
three days. I've been using this for a couple of weeks now and I really do feel like it's making a difference. My teeth are less sensitive. So I have been using, I brought this one for comparison, I've been using just uh, other types of Sensodyne for years and years exclusively because my teeth have have always been really sensitive. So I've been using Sensodyne for years and it doesn't really matter what kind of Sensodyne that you buy because they all have the same active ingredients which is potassium nitrate 5% and then sodium fluoride 0.25% which of course is what's in all the toothpastes to help prevent cavities. So the anti-sensitivity ingredient in, in all these Sensodynes is always the same, but in the rapid relief version the active ingredient is stannous fluoride which is different than what's in all the other Sensodynes. So I know it seems kind of silly to be making a big deal about toothpaste, but when I tell you that my teeth are extremely sensitive to the point where I can't drink anything without a straw, hot liquids for me are not quite as bad as cold. So I'm that person who's always ordering drinks without ice and needing a straw to drink anything. I have a really hard time eating ice cream, which that part is probably a good thing. But anything that's cold, I just have a really hard time with. It's very painful. And if you've never experienced tooth sensitivity, uh, it's a lot like brain freeze. So when you eat something really cold and you get that, that hard to describe but very identifiable pain, um, it's just like that but in your tooth. So I'm very excited because this is the only toothpaste that I feel like has ever really done anything for my sensitivity and when I think of what I expect from a toothpaste that claims to decrease your sensitivity, I feel like this is what I've been wanting my entire life. So very, very excited about this one. I should also mention that I got this sent to me by Buzz Agent in exchange for a review and so there's my review. I love it. Now we're gonna move on to the meh products that weren't terrible, but I just don't really like them. And again, all three of these came from Shopping My Stash as well. So we've got the Estee Lauder, the Mattifier Shine Control Primer. It has a really long name. But this stuff does absolutely nothing. It's expensive and I just, d I just don't like it. And then we have the Dr. Brandt Pores No More Primer. And I would say this one is a little bit better than the Estee Lauder one because this one does have some effect on pore blurring. And I do think it makes the foundation go on smoothly on top of it. But still, it's just meh to me. And then the Hourglass Ambient Lighting Palette, the original one, not the strobing one, just can't get on board with it. So when you use it as a highlighter, it's very subtle. And if you try to use it all over your face, then it's way too shimmery, in my opinion, you know, for me and my oily skin. And it's also way too dark to try to use it to set my under eyes. And this has a steep price tag, totally not worth it, in my opinion. Now, I only have two products that I would put in the bad category, and they're both foundations. So first is the Soap and Glory One Heck of a Blot Foundation in the shade Fair Enough. Yes, this is the lightest shade and they only have four shades, so really, really poor shade selection on that one. I do think that it helps with oil control. My problem with this is that it doesn't look natural at all and it is obviously way too dark. So the color is really off for me and more than that, I just don't like the formula. It looks really heavy and cakey and it creases really badly. So when this one is finished, we'll not be repurchasing that. And then lastly is this Hourglass Immaculate uh, liquid to powder foundation in the shade Blanc. The shade on this one is pretty good for me, but I have a really hard time working with this formula. So it dries incredibly quickly and it really does dry to a powder finish, so they're not lying about that. And the oil control is good, but I have such a hard time with the application because you have to work fast. It dries pretty much immediately. So if you're trying to blend it out with the sponge, then you, you end up with unevenness um, and then you try to build it up, but now you're essentially putting liquid on top of a powder and it makes it look even worse. It goes from zero to horrible really, really quickly. So it ends up looking really, really heavy and cakey and gross. And every time that I use this, or even lately I've been mixing it in with other foundations to see if, if that could lend maybe some mattification to it. And I have had to completely remove my makeup and start over again when I've been using this. So definitely not a fan of this. And this is insanely expensive as well. So those were my favorites and least favorites for the month of February. Let me know what you enjoyed this month and what you didn't enjoy this month. 
Hope you're having a great day and I'll see you next time. Bye.